Hello, everybody. I'm sitting out here on my back porch just chilling, but I wanted to talk to you for just a few minutes about our upcoming election. Now, I know you've heard it a thousand times probably by now, but August 4th is going to be a really important election for us locally because this will determine who will be on the ballot in the general election. So I really need everyone to understand that and either mail in your ballot now, take it to your clerk's office, or make sure you get to the polls on August 4th. Okay? So starting from the top, who's not on our ballot right now, but that would be Joe Biden for president. And of course, we want to send Gary Peters back to the Senate because we need to hold the Senate. We need to hold the Senate. We need to hold the Senate. And then there's Andy Levin who does a really great job of representing us all in the Congressional 9th District. Okay, new person on the scene that I want to encourage people to take a close look at is Kelly Nolan in the 10th Congressional District. Now, she's not in the district in East Point, but for those who are on my Facebook page and actually live in the 10th Congressional District, please give her a very close look. I think she's going to do well by you. Then uh, closer to home on uh, 18th District for state rep, our own Kevin Hertel, and I say our own because this will be his last eligible term if he wins, and I want him to go back. I want him to be able to finish the job that he started for so many people. And if you know him like I do, you know he doesn't quit. But, you know, since this is his last term, he's probably going to be in a position where he has to wrap some things up. And if he doesn't win, we're all going to be the bigger losers. So please, please vote for Kevin Hertel. Um, then in the 22nd district for state rep, um, Ryan Nelson met Ryan on a picnic a couple of <laughs> last year, in fact. Uh, he's been on the scene in a number of events. We've been in the same place. So I think he's going to be a great addition to the 22nd district and the state as a state rep in Lansing. Lori Stone, the sweetheart of um, Lansing, uh, an educator and a fighter for all educators and students. So Lori Stone for the 28th district. Then there's a new person on the scene for the 33rd district, and that would be Olu Jabari. And I want you to really check him out. I think the young man has a lot to offer, and he's worth taking a chance on. Okay? For prosecutor for Macomb County, it has not been a secret, and it won't be a secret. I'm supporting Jody Swatowski and encourage you to do the same. Of all the candidates running, I do believe she is the best fit for Macomb County. Of course, you can differ, as many people will, but I would encourage you to check out everything she has done and some of the things she's planning to do. She cares about all, and we need someone in the prosecutor's office who will do the right thing for everyone every time. And I think Jody Swatowski is that person. Fred Miller for clerk. In Macomb County. Now, I know there are some people who have issues with Fred, but I don't have any. And I don't have any because he's been instrumental in making sure that um, I was able to navigate the election process with campaign finance report and getting everything on time. So I want you to seriously consider he the job he's done, considering what he walked into, and the job I know he will continue to do. Lori Barnwell for Macomb County Treasurer. I had an opportunity to help clean up a park in Warren with Lori and her son. And I'm telling you, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with anybody who's willing to get into the midst of the fight, bring a child with them, and continue to work for the people. This is not just a personal agenda. She is truly working for the people. So please, give her a look. Look at what she has done in Warren and what she is capable of doing. Then um, for our own third district commissioner, well, she doesn't even have an opponent. So, and, and everybody knows what she's a fighter. 
And I would be remiss in saying that she cares about those of us in East Point and she will do the right thing for all of us, okay? For the judge, um, Bridget Mary McCormick, who is currently the Chief Justice uh, in the Supreme Court in Michigan, please keep her there. Again, her name is Bridget Mary McCormick. Please keep her in her seat. The other newcomer, well, not newcomer for her line of work, as a judge or, or as an attorney, but Elizabeth Welch. I've had an opportunity to talk to her, question her, and I'm impressed. We need more people who care about people and about what happens in the judicial system. So I encourage you to vote for Elizabeth Welch. Uh, there's a, an issue with probate judges on our ballot right now. Of course, some of those were for general election. I'm just going over them all. But for probate court, I would seriously suggest Lynn Mason. Um, and I decided after looking at all of them and their records uh, that are available online, I decided to go with Lynn Mason. Okay. The other two people, um, or one seat, a council seat in East Point, you, you all know that I support Rob Baker with all my heart. I don't always agree with every decision he makes, but he's still the best bet for us all in East Point. So I want you to seriously consider him for um, if to keep his seat, to retain his seat on city council. He's already there and he has, he's, you know, you can find um, more of his credentials on Facebook. He volunteers with Gleaners. He's been an asset to the community for a long time, so we don't want to lose him, especially not on the council, because we need someone who is capable of being an independent thinker. And when I say independent thinker, I mean just that. He is an independent thinker. He will not be carrying water for anybody on that council, and we need to keep that in mind. Independent thinking is needed in every aspect of any political arena, because we don't need anybody to be yes people and go along to get along. We need somebody willing to stand up for themselves and stand up for the people. And I think Rob is the best person who will stand up and do the right thing for the residents in East Point. Okay, then we have um, on the general election coming up school board members and um, Robert Roscoe is um, a, a, a close friend. And, I, and I'm not hesitating because I don't know how to say this. It's just that when we met for the first time at a convention in Lansing, you know, it, 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 we just clicked. And so we've been working together. He's worked on my campaign. I've worked on his, helping to support him in his bid for a school board uh, in 2018. And so he has been a very phenomenal addition to that school board. And I know he will continue to be because he is genuinely interested in learning. He just accomplished achieving his certification uh, from uh, from Lansing, and he's excited about it. I'm excited for him. He has some great ideas on how to move forward with the East Point Community Schools, and I'm behind him 100%. So if I said that a little fast, guess what? You can always revisit this video. It will be on YouTube for your pleasure. I am excited about what we can do to change the perception that some people may have of East Point. So, and it's going to take all of us working together to make sure we have the best representing us everywhere. And I believe that I have chosen the best on my election list. And I hope you agree. I really want to see all these people either keep their seat or earn one, because right now, as Americans, we need people in office that care about people. So, in case you haven't figured it out, I'm Mary Hall Rayford. I'm hanging around in East Point until the end of time, or my time comes, perhaps it would be a better way of saying it. But I'm looking out for all of those in the city because I care. If I didn't care, I wouldn't have a word to say. So please know that. 
I care about everyone in the city, and I want to make sure that we elect the best people. And if you haven't completed that census, please, please, please complete the census. You can go online and follow the directions there if you haven't received the information in a paper form, but please complete that census. Um, it's important because funding is determined by the number of people that actually complete that. And I know a lot of people don't want, they feel like, you know, the government is too nosy. Yeah, they probably are. But when it comes to getting funding for our state, please, please, please complete the census and go vote on August 4th to exercise your constitutional right to participate in our democracy. I hope I haven't bored you. And if I have, I apologize, but that's the way I am. Have a great evening. And I am looking forward to seeing great election results. And I hope you are too. Bye.